How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to QS Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Um, this is something we actually haven't done before. We're taking a little kind of a, we'll call it a staycation because we're pretty much still at home. We're like, we're heading about an hour north of our house. Well, northeast of our house. Um, I take the month of October off every year. Well, starting last year, this is my second year. Uh, the boat's actually coming out next week to have some work done to it, but we wanted to do a couple little staycations and kind of show you more of the keys that uh, you may have not seen before if you're not familiar or haven't been down here. Um, and I know a lot of people have a misunderstanding of how big and what the keys actually are because I'll get messages all the time that are like, hey, we're in Isla Mirada. Where's your boat at? We want to stop by and say, hey, well, Isla Mirada is about two hours north of me. So if you're not familiar, the keys are a long skinny stretch of islands that extends off the south end of Florida. Um, and there's about, I think it's actually a little over 120 miles of it, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's a pretty big area, lots to see and do. So we are stationed in Key West, as you know. Um, but today we're loaded up. Uh, we're heading, we're gonna take a few days off. We got a Airbnb up in Marathon. Um, so we're gonna go up there and just kind of take a few days off, unwind and unplug a little bit, hopefully catch a few fish, maybe spear or catch a few fish and um, kind of just enjoy our time. So Madeline's over here somewhere in the truck. She's got most of the supplies. And uh, I'm gonna be running the boat up with Tipsy and see if, um, well not see if, we're going up there and uh, wanted to bring you guys along. So the run from Key West to uh, Marathon's pretty straightforward, depending on the wind. Today it's out of the north, so I'm gonna be staying on the south side of the island. And uh, I think it's only about 45 miles. So it's about an hour, uh, hour 20 minute run. So. Uh, we're going to get going, get up there, and um, hopefully have some fun and show you guys around. Tipsy, we made it. Don't jump out of the boat. This is not the sandbar. Come here. Come here. I know you're excited. <laughs> she got crazy shaking leg. That was easy peasy. And we are here. Tucked away safe and sound. As you can see, Pal and Malin made it up. She drove the truck separately. Um, and one of the more common questions I get um, as a charter captain, I guess just as a business owner in general, when people are coming down to fish or dive with me, um, they're always asking me where, where's a good place to stay. And quite honestly, we don't have an answer because we don't stay anywhere other than our house. So I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of showcase the property we're staying at and just kind of give you a rundown on it. Um, like I said, I drove the boat up super easy getting in here we're in key colony beach i actually when i was younger we visited here a ton with uh my family we spent pretty much every summer here for several weeks and uh, a lot of good memories here but it was cool to come back so i pulled the boat in um i've been talking to the owner super nice guy each each unit here this is two separate units each unit has uh 40 feet of dock space which is pretty cool um if you are looking for a place to stay, first impressions, this place is gorgeous. Uh, two separate units, each has its own pool. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it's probably the easiest way to find it. It's online, obviously, but um, as you can see, here we are. We've got just one side. We don't need more than that. The fortress. Tipsy, yeah, right? Tipsy found an old used something she's eating. Um, but just a beautiful property so far. We hadn't gone inside yet. Malin just pulled up, brought all the gear. We've got spear guns and all that stuff for this this week. And I think we'll head inside and do a walkthrough, kind of tradition on vacation. You gotta go look inside and go ooh and ah. 
check it out. Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> oh my god, look at this kitchen. What a sink! This is insane. Oh, Holy moly. Oh. So, he also told us um, right across here we have access to a private beach, which is pretty cool. Not a, not something you see a lot in the Keys. If you've ever been down here, everyone's like, what's the best beach? I'm like, oh, the beaches suck. So to have a private beach is a pretty rare treat. Wow, this is gorgeous. This is so nice. Started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> Holy crap. Boat is right there. Wow. Private pool. And one thing he did tell me, which was kind of cool, he said if you have a big party, big family, you just open that up. <gasps> and it's, um, you, can, you can rent out both units. What? Isn't that cool? Oh That's God. pretty wild. This is, epic. this is set up. No one's over here, right? No, but I would shut it. I'm gonna go look at the bedrooms. Hold on, I wanna come. So there was one bathroom down there. I feel like this is a tradition on vacation. You just walk through and look at everything. <laughs> wow. Got a bedroom. Big shower. Oh, wow, so pretty. Oh, it's got the rainfall thing. This is where you'll be, babe. <laughs> wow, look at the master. Wow. This, this is, is like, <laughs> like pristine. This is fancier than we're used to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Gosh. What? What? Oh, wow, man, we're like fancy right now. We're out of our element. <laughs> Wow. So nice. Holy moly's. So yeah, I see the boats right here. He said there's technically one slip for each unit, so got plenty of space. This is really cool. This is awesome. We're gonna get settled in and I'm probably gonna crack a beer. I haven't decided whether or not we're fishing today yet. It was actually supposed to be um, a lot calmer than it is. We've got a a decent north wind it's 15 18 out of the north kind of on and off but um tomorrow's supposed to be a lot nicer so maybe we may just spend the day by the pool and um do some fishing and dive in tomorrow we will check back in it is time to do some fishing or diving i don't know brought everything i'll be honest with you i'm not familiar with marathon at all um, I have two numbers up here. I think they're public recs. I have literally nothing to go off of, so kind of be uh, shooting blind from the hip here. But for those of you who are interested, um, yesterday it was 50 miles total run. Um, I used double that, so 24, 25 gallons. And my average economy was just under two miles to the gallon. Um, but yeah, we're gonna head out don't really have a plan other than try to find something for dinner. As you can see, I have no waypoints up here. Something right there, I don't even know what that is, honestly. Um, but I'm kind of just gonna get out here on the edge of the reef and drive around uh, until I mark something that looks promising. I don't know what the viz is like either, so. Like I said, we're shooting from the hip here. Essentially, I just drove out to the edge of the reef until I started to see some structure. And I'm just gonna drive along this until I mark something that looks promising. And it's gotta be fairly similar to Key West. We used to visit, a, visit here a lot when we were younger, but we only, we only did lobstering and like backcountry red groupers and holes and stuff. We didn't really do much fishing. Um, other than mahi and whatnot, so we're gonna try and get on maybe some snappers today. Kind of take it as it comes. 
I really haven't marked much as far as life goes. A lot of nice up and down bottom uh, rocks and thick, what looks like thick Swiss cheesy bottom. So I don't know. Not marking any balls of life, but I think I'm just gonna pick a spot and toss the hook. So because we're working blind here, I'm just gonna put a uh, block of chum in the water, no real rush, just gonna let it sit 15, 20 minutes. See if anything comes up. Uh, just give it some time. chum all over me. <laughs> That's actually a nice yellowtail too. That is a good one. We're gonna call that dumb luck. That was first bait down. Dang. It's a 16, 16 and a half inch yellowtail. Why did I wear a white shirt to go fishing? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh -oh. You should know by now we don't have nice shirts. We're not those kind of people. <laughs> That's a good one. That was literally dumb luck. I'll take those all day. Especially for what I have in mind for dinner. I don't know if this is normal, but we kind of live for food. And as I'm eating breakfast, I'm thinking about what's for lunch and also what I'd like to have for dinner. <laughs> I've been thinking about this sandwich I want to make for like three days. I will take it. So we, we haven't had anything. We've been here about 20 minutes. We hadn't had anything come up in the chum slick. Um, we've just got the chum bag rolling back here. So we're gonna use a little more, um, I use the word aggressive method. And what it is is we call them sand balls or sand balling. Some people have different names for it. It's just chum and sand mixed. And essentially it's doing what that chum bag is doing up top, but it's gonna do it down deep. And we're gonna kind of Trojan horse method this thing. And what you do is take your bait, Hide it in the ball. And because there's sand in it, it sinks. We're gonna send her down. Malin's gonna break it at about, about 30, 40 feet, kind of depending where you're at. And then continue to feed it. We're in 70 feet of water. And you pop that ball and continue to let it drift. And hopefully, Fish will grab it. It's a fish. There you go. Get a man, that's Yay! a big one. Holy moly. I beat yours. Ooh! That's a flag. <laughs> All right, get a hold of them. Okay, hold on. I don't, I don't want to get This is my clean white shirt. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know if you paid for the, the fish handle on upgrade. I did. I definitely did. <laughs> Ow. Bit me. Dang, I 
than that, I mean, I kid you not, this is the first spot we checked. I mean, that's just pretty much dumb luck. 16, 17 inch yellowtail right there. Go me. Go you, baby. <laughs> Woo. This one ate hard, had a little more boogie on it. Kind of gave up, but either a, I'm guessing either a, a nice yellowtail or a mutton. A smaller mutton if it is a mutton, but it ate with intention. Oh, nice! Yeah. That's a oh, big boy! Getting borderline the flag status here. Show him in the light? Wow! Love it! I'll take those all day. And as always, I brain and bleed. Everything. Big and small. And because these guys are smaller, go straight into a saltwater brine. Salt water and ice mixed. We're doing all right. I'm gonna get two rods going. You can see not much going on, just kind of on the edge here in 60 feet. So if you're making these sand balls, if you're making these sand balls by yourself, the biggest thing is you want to Make sure your hands are nice and clean before you're dealing with your reel. The last thing you want is sand all up inside that reel. Rinse my hands off real good. And I'm just kind of ballparking how deep I am. I ish want this to be about 30, 40 feet before I pop it. Yellowtails never actually came up in the chum slick, so this is a good alternative. If you know they're there and they won't eat the chum on the surface, this is kind of a more aggressive way to get them to eat. dumb luck and I know you can't tell but I promise you this was literally the first spot we checked <laughs> I'd rather be whoop, rather be lucky than good any day of the week man you just made a mess oh uh, yeah I can't blame you buddy I'm pretty sure I got chum in my beard yummy kind of flavor ew <laughs> yummy oh ah, you almost hooked me oh <laughs> Fish? You're not closed. Oh. There you go. Real, real, real. You come undone. You come undone. Oh, 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 that happened so quick. I didn't even know. I'll let you got blue runners coming up from the slick. Yeah, I was gonna say that one had a little more tail. Oh. Tail pop to it. Kingfish bait right there. Or amberjack. Goodbye. <laughs> Fish on! Oh, here come the excuses. <laughs> oh, got some kick to it. method will actually work for um, like muttons as well, mutton snappers. Scale the bait up, a little bigger size. Kind of the same technique, but it'll, it'll work for multiple species, but we're on the yellow tails.
I caught the biggest one. I don't know. This one's got the boogie on it. It's kind of got like a blue runner tail thumb, though. Uh. <laughs> you had the biggest one. Oh. Holy crap. Look at that. They do have flags in Marathon. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. That is a beautiful, beautiful yellow tail. That's about all Here, we need. Pull it into the sun. Pull it into the sun. Yeah, baby. One of the coolest things about up here the reef is like four and a half miles away yeah 4.6 it's kind of the area that we were fishing but i mean shoot four miles that's nothing get these fish cleaned up and make some snapper sandwiches Got our beautiful yellowtail snappers. These are pretty straightforward as far as flying goes. You want a sharp knife, but not too sharp because you'll cut through a lot of stuff you're not supposed to. Well, these I just follow the backbone straight down, keep that flat. As I always talk about, I like to have. Um, some chilled salt water to set fillets in. And just like so. And what we're gonna do tonight, and we'll get a little more in depth in, in depth with it in the kitchen, obviously, but almost almost like a po' boy, like a shrimp po' boy, but with snapper, and we're gonna blacken it instead of fry it. This is, like I said, this is salt water, a little bit of ice, keep that nice and cool. And fresh water breaks down the fillets a little bit. Got some pin bows, go about halfway back. There we are. We'll see you in the kitchen. So we are we're in the kitchen. Um, taking a break from the pool. Nice having a pool. We obviously don't have one behind the house. What we do is just a little salty, but so we're gonna do Kind of, I had a shrimp po' boy last week and I kind of felt inspired-ish. So we're gonna do kind of a snapper po' boy, but instead of being fried, it's gonna be blackened. And as always, all the domes. We're gonna put it on some, well, we're about to toast this, some toasted Cuban bread. And we have kind of a salsa. It's tomato, uh, red onion, cilantro, a little bit of lime juice, lettuce, and uh, mayo, mustard, and lime. Dang. 
book skills on point. Oh, and that's my sandwich? Mm -hmm. mm, I need a. Mm. Oh, I need ice cream. You need, need what? What do you need? No, we're okay. Talk to me. We're okay. <laughs> Definitely lots of sauce. Lots of sauce. Alright, that's good. And there. Oh my god. Is our black and snapper po' boy. That looks so good. I want to dig in so hard. Oh my gosh. Hurry. <laughs> kind of proud of that. You should be. I'll give it a 9 out of 10 for presentation. It's, and you know when you like draw something up in your head and it never looks like what you think it was gonna? <laughs> this actually looks like what I thought it was gonna look like. Yeah. Pretty spot on. So we're gonna give this a go. I've never had this before. I would buy this. I would spend I mean, twenty bucks on this sandwich. I kind of did. <laughs> we probably spent more than twenty bucks. <laughs> oh, the onion is burning my eyes. Oh wow! Do I have some on my face? Yeah. <laughs> That is a good one. Mm-hmm. The crunchiness of the bread is perfect so it's a little, for the fish. It's a little different because when I taste that flavor, I expect it to be fried, but. Mm. I feel like the crunchiness of the bread is perfect. Yeah, it kind of substitutes the fried. Mm-hmm. Mm, I need one. <laughs> Looks like an animal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm starving. This is a good one, babe. I'm kind of proud of this Cheers. one. Cheers. I'm kind of proud, not gonna lie. This is awesome. Mmm. That is a must do. The tomato onion. Meeting that like key lime mayo mustardy, it's almost like clashing, but it's pleasant, very extremely pleasant. Yeah, I feel like they marry well together. But that is all we've got. I think we're done here. I'm gonna stuff my face. You're good now. <laughs> Again, if you guys are coming down, and you're looking for a place to stay. We've had a an, had an incredible time here. I don't know if you can see Tipsy in the back. She's sleeping because she's had so much fun. <laughs> She's been pooped from running around, but um, as always, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll put a link in the description um, for the um, the units here if you're interested in coming down. Highly recommend. We'll see you on the next one. Later. Mm. 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 I almost could have my bread like even toasted more. I feel like it's yeah. so good with the crunch. That's a good one, babe. I'm kind of proud of that one. You should be. This is a good one.